Welcome to another edition of the SOS Show. We've got Adam. What's up, guys? Is, yeah. Who is a model, you said? Yes. You're in the modeling business? Yes, exactly. How did you get into that business? Uh, I, was, uh, I was a sports freak from Sweden who uh, went to America to play football, <laughs> American football, and uh, fucked up my knee and then got scouted in Texas which I later picked up on in Sweden. Sweden? Yeah. How long, how long have you been in America? Uh, since September. Wow. So, like seven months, something. But I think about half the battle of being a model is being good looking. So, there you go. You, you got a good looking guy, so. <laughs> got to keep it up. <laughs> Eat some salad. So what some you... Cheetos. <laughs> some chocolate. So, you're doing commercials? You're doing <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, yeah, anything basically, mostly like photo shoots though. So uh, you got an agent, manager, publicist. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, in LA here I have uh, two management, and where I'm going now to New York, I have one management. Kind okay. of funny, but one and two. Yeah. <laughs> so then you could um, you have two countries to deal with. You can go back to Sweden with a little bit of success here, and parlay that for some dough, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, I like to stay here in LA now, so I'm gonna s go to New York for a few weeks and come back here and live by the beach. Okay, <laughs> living by the beach is good. That's we're in Marina Del Rey right now. Yeah, but um, now I used to have a show called Make a Hollywood Movie. Okay. And uh, I used to go to red carpets and uh, parties and sets and movie sets when having an interview. Uh, the people behind the scenes. I always ask two questions, so I'm going to start asking those questions now. Okay. Um, the first question is, uh, what was your dream in life? What was your goal? That's funny, because um, I was in a lot of sports, and every sport I went into, I said, I want to be a star in this sport. And I just kept going up and up, so, but... Yeah, I so mean, a sports star. I mean, uh, yeah, that a, a was professional that, athlete. Yeah, definitely. That was that was definitely. Well, as you said, the yeah. football until your knee got blown out. Yeah. My, my sons were tennis professionals. Okay. They played the Grand Slams, traveled around the world. Yeah. So that was fun. Okay, so the next one is, what advice do you have for people that want to get into the modeling the business? Left two lanes to turn left onto feet um, to I'd say. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of talking going around no matter where in the model business you are and it can be very harsh on you but it's if you're gonna get into it then like have a pretty open mind to a lot of things or just like don't take everything too harsh on yourself and uh, like because everybody will judge you just of how you look and everybody can't handle that very well so Definitely expect people to say bad things to you or whatever that, so that it won't be as hard going in. On that note, there's a book that I, I suggest a lot of people read. Um, it's a very popular book. It's been around for a long time. You might have read it. It's called The Four Agreements. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. Maybe I've had. You might want to read it. Um, I'll tell you what they are. First agreement is, and there's a lot to what you just said there. Um, the first agreement is uh, be impeccable with your word. Okay. You know, which a lot of people aren't, but it's good to be keep your word and you know be impeccable with it. Second one is, which reflects what you just said, never take what people say personally. Yeah. Because usually it's not a reflection on what's happening with you. It's yeah. something that's happening with them. With them, yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what you just said. The third is never make assumptions, and the fourth is always do your best. There's four real basic agreements that if you keep um, your word to or your your goals to, um, life is a lot better. Yeah. What do you think about that? No, it sounds good. And um, this uh, to always do your best is is kind of like very wide uh, like sentence of how to say it because like somebody's best can be somebody else's. Like, it's totally different everywhere. Well, yeah, so. you can't only do your yeah, best. You can't exactly. do uh, unless someone else's best. You, I mean, like, you can't be a billionaire uh, necessarily because someone else is a billionaire. I mean, your best is, may not be a billionaire status. Plus, you don't want to be a billionaire. 
And you certainly don't want to tell anyone if you have a billion. Because <laughs> they're all going to want something from you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so this is definitely the place to, uh, and this in New York, to be a model. No question. I don't think you're going to get too much work in Des Moines, Iowa as a model. In Iowa? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but no, you don't look not. Swedish. That's uh, so funny. You don't have the Swedish look, but you certainly have the accent. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's um, I'm very mixed uh, around in Europe and stuff. Very mixed background, but yeah, born in Sweden. So, what do you think of um, what's going on in America with uh, our new president? I uh, switch into politics real quick here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so bad with politics. <laughs> I don't follow much news. <laughs> That's actually a good thing. Yeah. I think that, um, there's just, do we need to know how many people were murdered last night in the news? You know, there's a saying in the news field, if it bleeds, it leads. Yeah. So we all want to hear how many deaths there are and what bad news is. My son doesn't watch the news either, and my wife does. It's like, do you, you know, it's just, in the old days, when they didn't have instant me uh inter entertainment or instant news life was a little simpler you know i mean we don't need to know the disasters that are going yeah, on yeah it every, just every creates minute. more fear yeah everybody. fear exactly good point yeah so now um, did you get nervous uh, your first time modeling were you nervous at all um yeah actually i, re I remember it quite well it was i never really took photos uh never and i I didn't really know what modeling was when I just got into it, um, but even though I wasn't, like, had never taken photos before or weren't very good at it, it everything just changed when it was a professional photographer taking photos of you, even if it was outside, like, I was had to be in a fountain in, in the middle of the city in Gothenburg and, like, kind of like stripped my t-shirt off <laughs> um, in Sweden and but it, like a lot of people are gonna be looking like and judging but when it when you know it's a professional photographer then you, you don't really care as much it's like all of a sudden it's just work you know right so you block that out yeah so yeah no I, I like it was a bit nervous in the beginning but just to get started <coughs> take some photos it was kind of simple just how to it's it's you and a photographer if you're both in it the same way like it feels good then the picture's going to be good um, so is there a website that our audience could uh, check you out on you follow your career uh, Twitter yeah and Instagram? definitely you can follow me on Instagram it's uh, that European man you'll find it and uh, yeah website well, at all Oh, website, yeah, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an artist as well, so I paint a lot. Oh. I have a website, it's called Lobert Vibes of Life. You can find it. Can you say that again? Lobert Vibes of Life. Lobert? Lobert, that's my last name. So. Oh, okay, how do you spell that? Uh, it's L-O-E-B-B-E-R-T. Yeah, we would never gotten that one. <laughs> <Lobert>. <laughs> yeah, no. It's a French last name. Oh, my uh, wife's French. Yeah, I don't know any French. <laughs> um... Yeah, somehow that ended up there. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, you can find on uh, Instagram that European man. Check it out. It's good. You got a good handle there. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? Uh, we can, can we cover almost the end of our journey. Yeah. Um. So in New York, what, uh, what is the uh, what's the gig in New York? I don't know yet. It's uh, you go there, you go to castings get some jobs oh, oh you don't have something lined up you're just going to you're no. going to find some work exactly I'm just gonna be there for three weeks just walk around get some uh -huh. uh, walk around the castings just the same way as do it here okay but, so, but you've got those city. interviews lined up though yeah, yeah like you get your schedule every every yeah. night before <laughs> yeah you know I've, I've done over I've worked in over 70 different fields one of them was commercial okay. and I got two national commercials some years ago a uh, Geico and a uh, Kashi cereal, okay. And, but it's all about the numbers. I mean, you have to go through a lot of. I don't care how successful you are; it's still a lot of auditions. You know, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think the auditions top, top notch. You don't have to do as many, but you still yeah. have to do auditions. You know, yeah, for sure. Like 
auditions is probably bigger because like they have much more people to choose off when it's uh, auditions. Um, but castings for model jobs is usually just one time. Do they know, the they know what they're looking for and they just need it? Yeah, like sometimes even a request casting that they will like ask to see like a certain amount of people or certain people. And uh, so then they already cut it down. But once or twice is usually casting. You mean w w once and then a callback? Yeah. Well, that's the same pretty much with okay. auditions. Okay. You know? But uh, thank you for participating in the SOS oh, yeah. show. No this worries. Is follow you on. This, uh, for the morning. <laughs> the SOS show is going to be potentially, uh, um, it's going to be on a new network where uh, if you have a Roku, Amazon, or Apple, you can watch it on your TV. Okay. okay. And I'll give you a card um, and you keep uh, track of the shows. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We've got George. Hi guys. And his mother, who wants nothing but for George's happiness. <laughs> and they just got in from Alaska. And you live in Alaska? Uh, my mom lives in Alaska. I, I grew up here in Culver City. Okay. And uh, I'm just picking her up today. Well, actually, you're picking us up. Oh, so you didn't fly in? I didn't fly in. How'd I you get here? To, I, I Ubered here. You Ubered here? And now I'm Ubering back. <laughs> okay. Or lift or whatever we're using. Right, right. This is a lift. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you a lift. Yeah. And so you, um, yeah. When's the last time you saw your mom? Uh, it was about a year ago. Oh. Yeah, almost a year, right, mom? June. Yeah, it was uh, under sad circumstances, but uh, oh. last time. You know, yes, yes. And now it's happier. In now it's happy. Yeah. Just here, she's just here. Uh, what five days or four? Yeah, I I will be back. I'm supposed to be on my vacation for a month, and going back to Unice on June 5th. So no. explain Unice. You know where we're going? Because it's not saying anything, but keep right. Yeah, you can go straight and then take a. But now it's North Sacramento. I've been working in Unice for eight years now. Where? But explain Unice, Mom. People don't know. Yeah, tell us about Unice. Unice is producing. Uh, it's a fish company. Oh, I love crab. Yeah, and also they, they, they import all over the world. Really? And what do you do for them? I do for um, recovery and inspector and also processing. Oh. Filling. Where do they catch the crab at? Uh, the crab uh, near Russia. In Russia? Do you, have you ever seen that show, The Deadliest Catch? Yes. What do you think about that show? I think it's dangerous and also exciting and they make more money. <laughs> <laughs> well, <coughs> it's amazing. I think every episode, uh, every uh, season someone dies filming yeah, that show. Yeah, it's, like, it's really dangerous, but it's, if, you want, if you make one trick, uh, you make 25 grand. Trick. Each person? Each person. 25 grand. How long does the trip last? Okay, can you sign me up? Hi, my baby. I, don't know. <laughs> I want to make 25 grand in two days. The only, the only hired guys, not ladies. I'm a guy. Yeah. No, sign she me just up. Called you a lady. I'm, a, I'm a guy. Look at my hair. They might hire you that's, though. That's the joy sure. of having a Filipino mother. <laughs> she, she'll insult you by accident. <laughs> no, I, I, I'd like to make 25,000 in two days. And uh, see, no, I've, I've worked it in, in over. It wasn't an insult. I was. Uh, no, no, no. I was I'm, I'm just joking. So I, um, I've worked in over 70 different fields, and I haven't been a crab fisherman. So for two days, I would be a crab fisherman. I like that. Yeah. Sign me up. Yeah. I'll risk my life. What the hell? I'm. I'm uh, I live for I danger. Danger's my middle name. <laughs> danger. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, well, I teach martial arts for little kids oh. right now and I also bartend at the airport. Very good. Uh, those I consider my B jobs. My A job, I am an actor and uh, I also do stunts. Oh, wow. So I am slowly getting back into it. I had to take a little break, but that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. They're opening up a new P.F. Chang's at the International Terminal. Okay. So 
I've been working at a caviar bar. Champagne and caviar. Oh. I actually have the best <laughs> caviar in the country. Oh, really? Yeah, I sell to some very high-end clients. Oh, what's it called? Our, our place is called Petrosian. I know Petrosian, yeah. Okay. I should uh, show them my caviar. They'll probably want to buy my caviar. <laughs> it's from the um, Mears River, wild-caught. Okay. Off-the-shelf delicious. So, when you mean wild-caught... Um, go out on a boat yourself and get it? You have someone uh, else I don't. Do it, I or? mean, it's in Russia. It's caught in Russia. And but, Mirrors Rivers in Russia. I mean, you, you produce it yourself or... Well, or? the people that I represent. Oh, you know, okay. I don't do anything myself. Okay. Except, um, yeah, because I was reading people. the history about it and it's a pain in the ass to harvest. So. Well, <laughs> you know, some of them kill the, um, the sturgeon, but some of them just milk them. And, because uh, they... I mean, they They're 20 open, years old. You they know. just open them up and yeah. take the eggs out. It's and like an abortion, up. you know, not abortion, but a C-section. <laughs> That's right? so crazy. Yeah. Now, so caviar is one of the healthiest things in the world you could eat. I could send you three pages of all the nutrients in a yeah. caviar because you got to figure it's an embryo, which yeah. has all the nutrients for life, you know. But it's it's off the charts how healthy it is. Is it uh, considered too salty for everyday use? No, not at all. I eat it every day when I have it, you know. Wow. Um, I get the best price mm. and the best. So if you want me to, sit, if you want to set an appointment one day, I'll come in and show it to them. They will fr freak out. How good it is. You know, I I tried the kitchen caviar because all the expensive caviar is in a tin. Right. So when we open it up for the guest and then they enjoy it. Right. Um, I understand that the more expensive it is, it's like butter. Doesn't yeah, taste it's, like it's it melts in your mouth and it doesn't taste fishy. You know, okay. it's, not, it's not that it's a little salty, of course, but I mean, um, it's it's just delicious. <laughs> and it's, again, it's, it's so healthy. So if you had a choice, caviar <coughs> or truffles? Uh, well, caviar, yeah. Really? Because truffles, you have to eat with something else. Okay. You have to put it on something. I just eat it by the spoon. I don't even put caviar. The caviar I have a, even. I don't even put it on bread and butter. You know. Okay. What about saffron? Well, saffron, is, saffron is, is a is condiment. Like the most expensive. Uh, well, my wife's uh, French and she's a gourmet cook. Okay. So saffron goes in the paella. Uh -huh. it, it, that's a you don't eat, never would eat saffron on its own. Isn't it like two hundred dollars for just a little? Tiny yeah, there's little just thing, yeah, yeah, not quite that much. But so when they say saffron rice, it's not really saffron. It's just got like saffron flavoring. <laughs> it's just the flavoring. It's like salt. I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's a condiment. You know. It's a flavoring. So, Mom, what do you think about the TV show so far? Pretty well, good. you know, we all, you know, I've been having some great philosophical conversations. You're an actor. What have you acted in lately? Or do you have an uh, agent? Most recently, uh, I did an independent horror film called Gehenna, which uh, is on a limited film release. I think we only have about 30 theaters. Um, Worldwide, okay. one in Tokyo, one in I think Atlanta. Uh huh. Um, and what were you, so the my, bad guy? No, I, I played the porter. You know, I had a small part. It was actually my friend. He was the director. You know, it's always about who, who you know, know. Of course. So that was his first feature. He's actually a very famous practical effects artist. Okay. For um, all, basically all the monsters that you've seen in a movie, he made them. So Hellboy or Pan's Labyrinth, okay. he sculpted all those creepy. Oh. So uh, actually, we hired an actor, a very famous character actor named Doug Jones, who actually played the amphibious man in Shape of Water. Okay. So, and it won Best Picture. Yeah. So, Did you think it deserved uh, Best Picture? What was your favorite picture for the year? I, I didn't see all of them, but, you know, I think Guillermo del Toro is, he put in enough work that, you know, I think he does deserve some, deserves some recognition. Um, but it was cool to have an Academy Award winning actor be part of our really small independent film. Sure. And we shot it in Saipan, which is uh, the northern Mariana Islands. Oh, wow. uh, right next to Guam. Okay. So uh, the budget was a little less than a million. And okay. We did a Kickstarter. I mean, we can't really believe that we actually did it. So we're hoping for 
success, but everything starts off somewhere. So. The journey of a thousand miles yeah. begins with but a single step. Have you ever been to Saipan? No. Well, the furthest I've been lately is um, Mauritius Island. Okay. Which is pretty far. I, um, it, it, it's funny, it's a lot like Philippines, but it's a United States territory. It's near the Philippines? Because uh, my geography is horrible. So, Mom, where's Guam exactly? Near Philippines. Is it south or north? North? Okay, so then, if it's north of Philippines, Guam, and we took Saipan from Japan in World War II, so... It's got to be, it's got to be south of Japan. So, it's right stuck in the middle, and I think Guam is over here, and then Hawaii is a long ways away. Okay. So. So you how, you spent a couple weeks there then on the, on the show? Yeah, we were there for like two, three weeks, and um, I acted for one week, and the other week I uh, was a production assistant. So. Congrats. That was more like a, being a 12-year-old slave. Like, <laughs> you know, if they tell you to get coffee and there's no coffee, you're not supposed to say there's coffee, and that there's no coffee, and you have to find it. And it's, it's a ridiculous... Uh, hey, it sounds I, like a good... It's uh, like hazing, you know? They want to get that production assistant up to speed. Now, as an actor, do you um, have any ambitions to write? Uh, well, you know, in, in college, you know, they always made you write scripts and short stories and try to act out your own stuff, and, um, I always felt like I can write, but I don't have the talent like I've seen other people have it, so I, I much prefer to stick with the martial arts and the acting and let someone else write. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's get back to martial arts. Let's get to martial arts. I had a friend, Hector Pena. Mm -hmm. This is 30 some odd years ago, and he was the world five-time world welterweight kickboxing champion. Oh wow! And that in dollar fifty got him a cup of coffee. Was he? <laughs> was he? Uh, <laughs> no money. American kickboxing. He was or Mexican. Thai or well, uh, uh, American, I imagine. Oh, okay. Five-time world welterweight champion. And it, it, it make, it's not easy to do it once, let alone five times. Yeah. You know, so. so he was badass, but yeah. I, I guess maybe back then it wasn't the biggest sport because, again, that was over 30 years ago. Yeah. Well, and 30 years ago, people had a more old school mentality, too. Uh -huh. you know, well, they didn't have the social media and, the, and all the different distribution yeah. channels there are now. And, I, you know, even competition right now, it's look at basketball. <laughs> You get a 140 point game instead of an 80 point game. Right, right. You know, people are more about the the sports and the points and the image versus the actual right. martial arts itself. So. so, mom, let's talk to mom a little bit. Mom, yeah. how did you get from the Philippines to Alaska? What's that? Okay, and he he brought you there. This is her first time here? No. 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 Okay. I thought you said this is no, her first time. English. Her first time. Oh, you didn't speak English. That, that, that was 26 years ago. Okay. And how many children do you have? One. One child. One child. Yeah. So the, the trophy pressure, child. So the pressure is on me <laughs> to not make any mistakes. <laughs> are, 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 you, are you looking forward to having grandchildren? Yet? Someday, yes. Someday? Someday. 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 If it, if it comes, it comes. That's right. Yeah. You think it's going to come soon, or you think it's going to happen I 10 years from now, Mom? I don't know. I'm well, I guess the first step is to <laughs> fall in love. Are you in love? No. No? no okay. I'm not. On the prowl? I've been in love once, but not recently. <laughs> Falling in love is easy. Falling in love is easy. Is? Staying in love is tough. Yeah. It's too quick to go, and also it's easy to break. Yes, it is. Now I speak English a little bit. You speak <laughs> very well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Where in Alaska do you live? I live in Dutch Harbor, from Anchorage to Dutch Harbor. How is it? Dutch Harbor? Dutch Harbor. Dutch Harbor. Dutch Harbor. Is the last, yes. is the last uh, small island of uh, Alaska, and there is it's a lonely place. You only have two stores, Safeway <laughs> and Alaska Ship. Two stores. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. And she doesn't use social media or play video games or so I don't know how don't she does play, it. <laughs> I don't have internet. I don't have no. Oh my time. goodness. You're old school, huh? Mom? That is old school. I don't have a Do you have a running water? <laughs> of course I, I have my job is they pay for they do laundry for me, they cook for me. Oh. Sorry. Oh wow. Yeah, they clean my room. Is that right? They don't pay much, but still a little money and also save a uh, place to stay. And they pay your rent? Yeah, the rent is free. So you have basically, you're working for room I and board. I have a nice room also. I live in the fourth floor. Are there a lot of people Washington. that work for that company? It's uh, 1,200 employees. 1,200 employees. And they make crab, they catch crab? And they export it around the world. Yes. They make caviar also, uh, raw. They make it, but it's for export to Japan. Well, I'm, uh, I've been looking for chicken. They do all kind of different things, as I told you. Chicken? Chicken for uh, chicken feet and chicken paws. You like the movie Chicken Run. I don't know about that. You've never seen it? Oh, it's a long time ago, man. 1999. It's a claymation animated. Oh, no. With, you know, the clay. Yeah, yeah. What's it? Wallace and Gromit? You know, that type of... Anyways, highly recommend that movie. <laughs> if you're into chicken. <laughs> no, just want to sell some chicken, that's all. But so can you get me some good pricing on uh, caviar and crab? Uh, they don't sell it to the public. They oh. only sell it by boat. Um, by container. To Costco. Uh, full boat. Full boat. Full well, boat. no, I'll buy a boat. If it's, if it's like uh, 250,000 pounds. Yes. That's uh, it's only sold by one customer. How much is that 250,000 pounds, Mom? I had no idea. Five For million? One puppy or? is nine dollars. Nine dollars for a, what? We're, we're producing Pulak. Mm -hmm. Pulak is the most expensive uh, product that we have. Cod. Pulak? Pulak. Yeah, Pulak, yeah. P-O-L-L-O-C. Uh, we're the one supplying for McDonald's. Oh. She supplies the, uh, the fish for McDonald's. Those, those uh, filet of fish sandwiches. Yeah. Right? yeah. Fish sandwiches. So it's Pulak, yeah. Well, no, I could actually buy a ship. But the caviar goes to Japan. And, and you, are you selling to China at all? Because I could sell to China. Uh, they don't deal with China because they're cheap. And that's true. <laughs> okay. That's the thing, too. Our, our caviar and the uh, is Trojan. In England and also uh, part of Europe. For the Red King, this coming uh, August, Red uh -huh. King, they sell uh -huh. for one piece. Maybe I'll make a connection and sell some of some fish and caviar. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. This is all for this episode. And George, it's been great talking to you. Good luck in your acting and Thank you. kicking ass with the martial arts and pouring drinks and serving caviar. <laughs> Man of uh, many traits. Thank you, Mom, for Thank participating. Happy life. Thank you.